Hey guys, welcome back. New release Wednesday, NRW, July 26. So we just got, oh God, literally. Nerdgasm. All, all of this past week was just bomb after bomb after bomb, explosion of nerd fest because it was San Diego Comic Con. Which is, you know, in essence, the Comic-Con that everyone looks forward to throughout the years because of everything that comes out of this convention affects yeah. our lives. It has become such a pop culture media phenomenon. What you get at San Diego is different than what you can get at any other convention. And I mean, it's not really just comic anymore. It's, it's comic related, it's nerd related, it's pop culture related, yeah. but... This is an event. Like, this is what you plan for. You save up all your spoons so that you have the energy to just go nonstop for five days straight so that, you know, to you stand can... stand in line for yeah, five so, days straight. So you can stand in lines and make sure that you can get all the things that you wanted to get, see all the things you wanted to see, and spend all the money to, uh, you know, enjoy yourself at San yeah. Diego Comic Con. Have you ever been? I have not. This is my bucket list. So it's one of those conventions that I, you hear the nightmares, you hear the, the great stories, but to me, it's if I can go one time in my life before I die, it is something I really want to do. Yeah, Rob and I went once. He got to go for the entire weekend. He really enjoyed himself. I went for a single day because I'm a grandma and I just don't have the energy for stuff <laughs> like that. But even on I Sunday. I went out with Rob. I, well, I did. I we went to party. Oh, no, uh, no, no, no. But I mean... <laughs> Even Sunday. Sunday was so crowded. It was absolutely unreal how many people. It's about 150,000, right? It's an yeah. about it's over 100,000 I know that goes to the convention. And, and they set step. up everything mm -hmm. so quickly and just like that as soon as the convention is done, everything in the gas lamp district comes down. So you know, so we're going to talk yeah. a lot about this and break so it down what we can. Of course, we're not going to be able to cover every single thing that the convention had, but we're going to cover what we believe are the huge highlights. Right. So if you have not seen any of the trailers out of the 1,001 trailers mm -hmm. that dropped during San Diego, stop now, go watch them, because we're about to talk about everything that we possibly can in the span of 20 minutes. And the nerds out there are awesome. They've actually, there's one video on YouTube that actually pulled all of the Comic-Con trailers into one main video. It's How really nice long, that? but I sat there and watched them all over again and rewound yeah. just Ragnarok. Awesome. Over, <laughs> over and, and over, over again. And over, especially that part, what, where Loki is down on his knees. He's been shaking like this. Stop. Stop. <sighs> That's a whole other episode. That's a whole entirely different kind of We're going to have there. to continue now. All right. We'll be back, guys. So our first topic for the day are the titans that are DC versus Marvel. You mean Marvel versus DC? No, I mean DC versus Marvel. No, Marvel. No, it's it's it, alphabetically DC versus Mar Marvel versus DC. Okay, fine, whatever you have to say. That's right. You win. You win. Always hold so smash. holy crap. Um, let's go. <laughs> let's go ahead and talk uh, Ragnarok since you have already got those suckers out. Holy crap. All right. Oh my gosh. You see the first one? So exciting. It was really good. Everybody lost their shit over it because it was just hysterical. And it does what right. Marvel always does and brings in the humor, brings in the fun. So you have a little bit of, of that broken up um, drama going on. Now we get the second one and it's still just as funny. It's, I love how we have, um, there's like, now we have like, Team Cap, Team Iron Ant Man, and now you have Team Thor. Like, when you have, yeah. like, the Valkyrie, Hulk, Thor, and Loki all coming out of their caves walking, I lost my shit. Like, I was running around the house going, Greatest thing ever to be I mean, <laughs> even just to see the ultimate power of Thor as he's yeah. getting that flash of lightning. As hell is going, I'm the goddess of hell. What god were you again? And you see he's him like, like, land and just pop his head up and, like, lightning in his eyes. We're talking about Loki. So not, no, okay, fine. You want to talk about Let's Loki? Talk about Loki? Let's talk about Loki. I'm so excited about Loki on this one. I love how obviously he's got to work with his brother yes. again, and he's shooting guns with Thor, and he's like, Thor's like, hello, and Loki's like, yeah, and they're the shooting machine guns. I'm like, this is like Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy slash yes. Thor of the humor. I'm just no other trailer. I'm sorry, all the other tra trailers we'll talk about. I'll be like, they were cool, but not Ragnarok. <laughs> 
So that's definitely one of the things that I am most excited about in terms of trailers. But speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy. What do you mean? Did anybody happen to see that leaked Infinity Wars trailer? <laughs> So I did. Marvel did what Marvel does best and yeah. they, they showed the Infinity War trailer at D D23. Mm -hmm. And of course, somehow D23 is really good at hiding stuff. Right. But San Diego Comic Con, not so much. Whoopsies. So with the age of social media, <laughs> San Diego did what they did again and they leaked our trailer. And if you haven't seen it, just Google it because the internet never forgets. I really thought that they were going to take it down. I actually got a text message from a friend. They said, here, here's a link. Look at it before it disappears. And I shit myself. And I tagged so many people. I think I tagged right. you and Rob. And I'm like, let's watch it. And you didn't tag me. I did not. I missed That's what that was. <laughs> I, I, get no I, get no I get no love. I get no love. I couldn't find it. Oh. It's like I was a bad friend. And, and yet somehow... <laughs> It's still up and it's still floating. So whether it's a different video, somebody downloaded and then re-uploaded, whatever it is, it's still floating around out there. I am uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, you know, of course, with the quality that we saw, and it's one of the things I'm a little, you know, Marvel is my life. It legit, I have a shrine at my home just <laughs> for them and maybe one little Batman thing. You were about so, to fight me on it. I was. Oh, like, Marvel is my life, but I find it's a little disappointing that we had such a, in my opinion, a really good Justice League trailer that kind of was their version of Avengers. Mm -hmm. And we have our Avengers and, Dis or, well, Disney in essence, and Marvel have still not released it. And I'm like, well, it's leaked. You know we all have seen it. And it's the sh crappy... I was going to say shitty, but I remember I'm allowed to curse. It's the shitty quality of a cell phone. With the guy's head in the way. But, you know, part of me kind of feels like maybe they let it slide yeah. just to keep getting more hype about it. Because, yes, everybody's going to watch the trailer over and over again. Right. Yeah. But what they're going to do now is they're going to watch this leaked trailer, this bootleg, craptastic version, so that when we actually get the real trailer dropping... Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to be even more excited because we're actually going to be able to see clearly what and the hell we're looking at. Because yeah. I, I know, I know, I'd do the same thing if I was at the convention. Yeah. Woo! I would have done that. Woo! I would have that right. and like, well, especially when Loki's holding the Tesseract. Woo! Like, I was also like, you punk bitch! Like, what are you doing? But obviously right. he's not working for Thanos and if you think, we'll talk later, just right. comment. However, I will say the one thing that I am a little frustrated over is that in this Infinity Wars trailer, you see Thor floating through space and stacked up into the Guardians of the Galaxy, which sort of tells me, at least in some semblance, how Ragnarok ends. Yeah, and I think that's really why like, they were hiding that like Tom Hiddleston, for example, was sure. in Infinity War because it never hit his IMBD. And we didn't know it until this leaked trailer when everyone's like, wait, Loki's in this? And now we're all like, oh, obviously Ragnarok, Hela why. either won. Right. Asgard from the debris, you're seeing the Guardians are seeing. And of course, with the crappy quality, you're not seeing too much. It could be Asgard's debris. Oh, I saw right. Spider-Man. Oh. You know, you just don't know. But oh, yeah. there's Thor, like, I uh, don't yeah, know what's going on. Right. So... That's the Marvel side. Yeah. Can we quickly talk a little bit about the DC side? Can we one do that? Thing. One thing. One. Fine. Justice League. Okay. That was pretty good. Justice League. Uh, you know, Patrick has his his actors and actresses that he fawns over. Uh-huh. And he comes and talks way too much about it. Aunt May. <laughs> we fucking get it. I know. God So damn. let's yeah, just go ahead and be oh, stereotypical. And can I just sing Jason fucking Momoa? He is Aquaman on a reason because he, everyone around him is wet. <laughs> it's wet. Chris Harvey. So, hey, I'm always a good this, looking brother. I'll give it to him. He really is, truly. I'll give him a I think he's the perfect casting at all that they had Absolutely. for Aquaman. I really now, it's kind of the same thing for like Chris Hemsworth and Captain America and all these actors. I can't see any other actor play it. Right. So Although I, I still have a problem with Ezra Miller as a Flash, though. He's a cool actor. We'll I like him. See how but goes. they should have went with the, the brother on CW. Well, I know. And I have a whole feeling about that. Of They already had a fan base for yep. um, Green Arrow. And they had a fan base for The Flash. There are millions of people. All they had to do yeah. was grab that universe and slide the actors in. And they would have pulled all the people who watched that oh, show. Absolutely. And, uh, but I also I get, get in terms of you know who's hiring and who's paying. It, things have to change. Uh, definitely from the jump off, you see the normal differences between Marvel and DC. Marvel, you get the funny, you get 
you know, the bright colors, the action, and DC has been more of the dark, you know, dark and brooding, but they're finally taking a little bit from Marvel, and some of these trailers now from them, especially for Justice League, we're getting moments of humor. And Rob, you even mentioned that yeah. you said you had a lot of feeling of, like, Joss Whedon's you can, feel. You can feel Joss Whedon's DNA in that, man. That's, that's night and day clear that he's being yeah. a positive influence. They finished it, and then they went back, and he's doing more than just producing, and I read 20 minutes ago, he's now, they're contemplating uh, giving him credit as co-director. Well, I mean, at the, after, I think they said something, I can't remember how many millions, but there was an article saying that of the reshoots, it was like a huge chunk of reshoots um, worth of money that they had yeah. to do because it, it now needed. they're talking about it how absolutely needed it. Yeah. yeah. And but I think and I think what really impacted it was um Wonder Woman. Yeah. I don't think they anticipated the success. Wonder Woman has killed everything. That you have like it I think it's beaten pretty much every comic book film. So yeah, at least this summer of twenty seventeen yeah. it's gonna be the highest grossing summer movie. I don't know if it's the highest grossing movie of twenty seventeen. Yeah, I don't know either. But right. I just know it it did way better than what DC anticipated. So now they Joss is in charge and you know Joss has been a huge influence on lead female lay characters. Like he's always pushing that. Mm -hmm. That he probably saw the the Zack Snyder version of it may not have Wonder Woman in it as much as we would want. Even the Justice League trailer had Wonder Woman pretty much all throughout the whole right. trailer. Yeah. And that was like yeah. Just so again, yeah. super excited about yeah. it. Jason Momoa riding a body down like a fucking he surfboard. Ride. He can ride me like a surfboard <laughs> too, girl. A surfboard. Okay, no. so no, he's no. not. My Everybody boy. gets one. No. He's like Spider-Man. Everybody gets one. He's my one. Doesn't get the pass. He gets the pass. He gets the pass. Well, Tom Hiddleston's my pass. Gal, he definitely Gal Gadot is too big a deal, so I'm going to have to figure out my right. pass. You, everybody gets a pass. I don't Gal, care. I'm Jason everybody Momoa's damn hair. Maybe yeah. he can be my pass, too. For He's <laughs> so, so pretty. pretty. So I who wins? Know, Marvel versus DC, DC from San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah, so we got... I mean, we got a lot for Marvel, and it really... Yeah. And, at Marvel. Marvel wins. I mean, really, it's not so much the movies. Now we're talking TV shows. We're talking Arrow. We're talking mm -hmm. Krypton. We're talking Supergirl. All these shows that have been out, and then a couple of new ones. So you get Arrow mm -hmm. um, next season, and the one thing that I will say is, while I haven't always been the biggest fan of the show, it's gone up and down for me, a little bit of a roller coaster. I have nothing but the ultimate respect for all of the actors and everybody involved. If you haven't seen the clip online of the panel from uh, Comic-Con, where the little girl comes up and says, Hey, I beat cancer. When are you going to put out any more of the fuck cancer t-shirts? And he thinks about it for literally all of three seconds and then goes, you know what? We're going to get him out next year. But if you're going to be here next year, are you going to be here? Awesome. Gives the little girl a personalized necklace that somebody had mm -hmm. made for him. Was like, you can give this back to me next year. Knowing full well that he might never get it back. But just think about like what that means to this girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely amazing. Um, Having the the Justice League um, also oh, so we the had Justice League panel. Ben, ben and Gail, um, Gail oh, they both yeah. they both did like the one little Wonder Woman um, kid who walked up to her and was in tears. Yeah, and this is and I, I not my Facebook and I put it all over. This is why representation matters. Absolutely. You had a little girl just melt like she walked by. She walked by Aquaman. I was like, you need to talk to Aquaman. She's, She's like, like, I no, don't care. It was just a sign. And she and had help. a meltdown, and I thought that was beautiful because she. Because Gail just sat there and she just held her hand. And it's like a long her. moment. Yeah. I'm sure security was like... Yeah, handlers <laughs> was trying to shush him down the line. But, no. but honestly, I mean, you have to think. When we started watching these comic book movies, we had people saying to us, oh, this is little kid stuff. Mm -hmm. Why is this even on the screen? And now it's gotten to a point where it is so massive and it means so much to people that these characters are being brought to life. That, you know, you've got kids and adults. Because there was a mother and son talking with Ben Affleck who were both, I mean, like, ugly crying because it was just such an emotional moment for them. These are such yeah. real moments for adults. I mean, let me tell you, if I ever met Wonder Woman, I'm going to be like, you have no idea how much you mean to me. But having these children, like, they, it's a different reality for mm -hmm. them that you're seeing your hero on. Batman's a lot of kids' heroes. Batman's my hero. And I think Ben has done a really, in my opinion, the one movie we've seen him, he's done a good job. He yeah. can do better. The we'll give did, him better. The, the kid didn't want to stop at Jason Momoa because some 11 year old asked him where Superman was. <laughs> <laughs> at the panel, he's like, I don't know if mom and dad told you, but Superman is dead. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, I have friends who are live streaming a lot of these panels, 
and it was really fun to watch. I couldn't sit down and watch all of them, but going back and getting little snippets here and there and really seeing the excitement in the room. Guys, DC, Marvel, I don't care who you're for, who you're against, but you've got to admit, there's just so much coming out right now, and it's good, it's quality, and it's meaningful to a lot of people. Um, so just to throw a couple more things out there before we wrap up this segment, uh, Legends of Tomorrow is coming out okay. with a new season. Supergirl's coming out with a new season. Krypton, which is going to be a show on sci-fi, which is going to basically give you the history of the planet Krypton, which is where Superman is from. That's going to be a thing. Yeah. You've got Inhumans coming uh, out. Oh, with... Inhumans and the Thunders. Yeah. Um, all I'm going to say is we've already spoken about Inhumans. You know our feelings on that. Defenders. Not feel it, man. I'm sorry to that say. That trailer was either. disappointing. I, I mean, I feel like... And I said it before, I feel like these are the, the jock, the cheerleader, the nerdy kid, and... Um, it's the breakfast club. Just, it's just the people that shouldn't be talking and being yeah. friends, and there's no they're, chemistry in that trailer. They're and being I have forced a little worry. to be together, yeah. and it just doesn't feel like a cohesive unit. And who knows, they might prove us absolutely wrong. Because editing is really important in absolutely. filmmaking, so when you have a really crappy trailer, it really kind of gives you a perspective of like, oh... Because the jokes weren't funny. I no. didn't have any kind of... It I, 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 flatlined. Well, it did. The whole thing flatlined. But it could be the editor of the trailer. So we can still... Yeah. And I I personally haven't been a fan of most... Daredevil is here for me. And everything else kind of went this way. Yeah. So Daredevil, the first season, I still don't think they could beat that. The second season of Daredevil, for me, ended when like got like Punisher walked off. I got to get back to it because I don't yeah. like Electra, But that's on me. All right. So... <laughs> Marvel versus Marvel DC. won, by the way. Oh, Black yeah. Lightning, Cloak and Dagger, yeah. Runaways. There is seriously Y'all miss those, one. but it's all good. Check those there out. There is so much going on, but I have to agree with you on this one. Yeah, Marvel, Marvel won. Marvel. All right, shirtless hyphen bearer hyphen fighter exclamation point number two drops this week, as well as a reprinting, uh, a second reprinting of issue one. This story is damn hysterical. It's Image Comics, Jody Lahup, uh, Lahup, excuse me, uh, Sebastian Gurner and Neil Vandrell, <clears throat> and it's like that trope where they go out into the woods, to the cabin, the government sends a team to bring back the guy who was just a rock star at eliminating something. In South Park, it was Freddy Krueger in that in, in Sheepshin episode, and in this case, it's the shirtless bear fighter who lives in a cabin by himself, completely naked, with a pixelated reproductive organ down below his knee, which is definitely, you'll, you'll never forget that, let alone this is a comic about a grown man beating the ever-living daylights out of bear on bears in his one-man war against the war on bearer. It's hysterical. The second issue is opening up with a, a voodoo hillbilly. I think that's his name, voodoo hillbilly. And he's the guy behind why the bears are so evil. Cannot recommend the book enough. Go pick it up. Shirtless hyphen bear hyphen fighter two uh, in stores tomorrow. Secret Empire 7, Nick Spencer and Lennel Francis Yu. This is what, since uh, Bendis' Civil War II, they've been f preparing for this fight between Miles Morales and Steve Rogers that's going to leave Steve Rogers dead in the steps of the Capitol building. And of course, Miles Morales, who's still in high school, looks up to Captain America. We never want to see anything like this. Uh, the, the inhuman Ulysses predicted it. And oh my gosh, is this really what's going to happen? Well, the cover's got Black Widow on it with a sniper rifle, and the way that the story reads, or the previews read, is that she's probably going to be there to cap Steve. We all know, flipping through everything, this is not how Steve Rogers is going to end. It's going to be some clone, some cosmic cube, something. There's enough hints that have been laid in the last couple of years, and if you had to paint it visions and talk to Funky about it, he can tell you um, his theory, which is totally worth the time and the trouble. But hey, Spencer's been writing, at the very least, an entertaining story. And uh, you are enjoy the guy. I've loved him since his debut in Wolverine. You can't go wrong there. Third one, uh, All Star Batman Twelve. Scott Snyder, Raphael Albuquerque. Raphael Albuquerque doing art on anything. I'm going to want to buy. Scott Snyder when he jumped started this. It was right as he gave over the reins of Batman to Tom King, and it's been the crazy continuity free stories that he can tell. In this case, really from the first issue, he's been exploring his relationship. Batman's relationship with Alfred, and this is part three of its uh, second art going more and more into the past that Alfred has kept hidden from Bruce. I'm very, very interested for it. In Scott's hands, this team is completely worth the time. Those are my three. Have a wonderful Wednesday. All right, guys, we're going to do a trailer thon and kind of keep it with one minute each trailer that we feel has pretty much the 
for me, I like the yeah. most. Okay. All right, so number one trailer let's talk about is Star Trek. Star Trek Discovery. So watching the trailer for that, it actually looks fantastic. It has action. It's got a bunch of faces in there that you'll recognize, including mm -hmm. actors from The Walking Dead. Lucius Malfoy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actors who have been in True Blood and like Once Upon a uh, Time. I mean, just literally, I think... It literally is my word. I know. That is my word. Um, like, so is mine. Michelle oh Yao, gosh. Crouching Tiger, Hidden there is, Dragon. There are so many people in that. Captain. So, that's the plus. Special effects look amazing. The aliens, Another prosthetics. Plus. It really feels like Star Trek, and that it's, makes me excited. Right. It feels like it's a big budget thing. However, however, we do need to quickly talk about the uh, vehicle by which they are choosing to bring this to us. CBS Access. So what? CBS Access what? is a monthly um, subscription such as Hulu and Netflix and blah, blah, blah. And it's about $5.99, almost 6 bucks a month. And literally, I would be spending $6 a month to watch an episode. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. So is it worth it? Um, no. I'm going to have to say for me, while I would like to see it, this would be something that if I had friends who purchased a subscription, I would go see it with them. I am not going to buy the subscription myself. We've already got Amazon Prime, Hulu, mm -hmm. Netflix, HBO. I yeah. mean, I... It adds up after money. a while. It does. It gets expensive. And I have cable. I have CBS. And right. for some reason, the, the the monthly thing doesn't come with a CBS package. And I don't understand that logic. And I'm like, I own, already yeah. own CBS. They and, just need more money. I don't know. So, all right. That's Star Trek Discovery. You can split it. Two, four, six. No, I'm not doing that. All right. Number two. <laughs> number two. Ready Player One. WTF. And there's so, so much going on in this. I So the trailer is very big. I never read the book, so Maybe. apparently if you read the book, this is... At, but honestly, all the reviews I saw from like fans, most people were like, what the hell is this? And other people were like, this is not the book we know. Right. So far, if you watch the trailer, what you kind of take away from it is Tron DeLorean, Freddy Krueger, Akira, um, Kaneda's bike, Tron's bike, you have... Um, Millennium Falcon. Yeah, like, like it's just it's, it's weird stuff. It's nostalgia, and I'm curious as to whether I think it was Rob said earlier whether it's your nostalgia for all of these things of the past that's going to bring you in and make you want to watch the movie. Because honestly, I have no idea what the hell the plot was in in trying to get through this. The trailer gives you literally nothing other than look at all our fancy special effects. Did so you not I, read the book? No, I did no. not. So, and I said I didn't read the book. So, but what I did get out of it is that they, it's, it's a story that's been told. We have Sword Art Online. We mm -hmm. have Dot Hack Sign for the anime people in my life that are people who are in video games yeah. and live out of reality. Then you have The Matrix. You have, this is a story that's been told a million times. Right. So I kind of feel like, if the people, I don't know, did they die in the, the right. Oasis? Do they die yeah. in real life? I don't know. I mean, would I see it? Sure, I would see it. Sunday Am I Matinee, super maybe. excited about it? Eh, not so much. Mm -hmm. I, I think the next trailer, if it gives me a little bit more story, and I, of course I can always Google it and whatnot, but the trailer legit at, at a Comic-Con you think would be yeah. more like, here is what the story is. Here's <laughs> plot. I think what they did was kind of look and say, hey, this is, um, you read the book, you're good to go. Right. And that's the worst because. for those of us who don't know anything about it, we're it left with stupid. our WTF moment. All right. All right. Something I am excited about, though. Orville. Oh, my God. So I'm more excited <laughs> for Orville than I was for Star Trek Discovery. And it's because of Seth freaking McFarlane. Like, I love him. Yeah. So I was really hoping, as I heard, saw this start coming up, that it wouldn't be a... Family Guy style show because that's the humor that we have gotten from Seth MacFarlane throughout his entire career. And it's not to say that it's bad, okay, but it's show. something that we have already seen. Yes. But this actually seems like it's, it's going to be something different because uh, like John it. Favreau is attached to it. Mm -hmm. And you know, we love John Favreau. He has done some really awesome things. So you can tell the but yeah. like the budget they have too is really high because right. I, I'm loving that again, like with Star Trek Discovery, the prosthetics, the special effects. Oh yeah, For if a you show, I'm pretty this. impressed. Yeah, if you haven't seen this, this is essentially um, their spoof of Star Trek. And it looks hilarious. And it I'm really like does. and I think this is gonna have more viewership than Star Trek Discovery because I think more people have Fox than they do CBS Access. Absolutely. So this is one that I definitely, definitely yes. am gonna be watching. Um, now on to something that I would like to say I'm excited about, but I still have to finish season one because I'm a loser. 
Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. Okay, Stranger, Stranger Things, Things is my life, and she's really behind, so I we'll am. talk about it later. Behind on the times. So if you watch the first season, and I'm not going to spoil it for her. If you have watched it, you know she's like she's got to catch up. This is a huge extension to to what has happened in the world. So after we left season one, a lot of tragic things happened, a lot of happy things happened, and we get to see in this trailer kind of like the oh my god moments of the the upside down and the real world are colliding. I am really excited. And it also looks really, really, really like more of a horror base and Ooh. scary than it did in the first season, especially with the monsters trying to get from the up upside down to the real world. Oh, and like yeah. how the little boy is, I'm terrible with names, but the little boy who's connected. Yeah. I feel like him being the portal, so he needs to put a bullet in his head and just stop this all from happening. I'm <laughs> sorry, but you gotta okay. take the bullet and first. And there you go, the end. The end. Like, Look at the flowers. <laughs> yeah, look at the flowers, boy. <laughs> but it looks like he's going to cause a lot of troubles. But of course, being the little boy, we, yeah. want, we want all the kids to survive, I guess. You want them to live. But it looks fan. I mean, I am such a fan of all of the actors. Millie Brown's one of my new favorite little actresses in the world. She's adorable. I follow her on Instagram. Her stories are so cute. She's I'm like, so I will personal. adopt you. <laughs> She's such a cute kid. So yeah. I'll. Seeing all these actors and um, actresses back again, I'm 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 sorry. You need to finish. It I know. So we can talk I know. About it. I'm and I could spoil the hell out like of it. Like two episodes away from being done with the first season, and there's just you know life happening. Okay, so life it. needs to stop. And you need to do I know. it. All right, our, our last, last trailer. Last trailer is gonna be something that we need to bring in. Uh, our special handsome. Uh, Okay. So, so Rick and Morty <laughs> season three has been over two years in the making, and last year they didn't have it, but they did. Uh, they did that reading from the the, the court? people. The court, oh, the court versus yeah. school of Georgia. So that, that was, was the thing funny. last year, which was really funny. This year, uh, I'm out in San Diego for drill, and I'm walking with a buddy, and we uh, we're really close to the convention center. We're at Gas Lamp, so we go down there. We're seeing all like the the booths that are set up, and I missed the the Blade Runner twenty forty nine thing, which our pal Kyle went through, and at some point got like Blue Label, Johnny Blue Label, like it was <laughs> insane. Some of the the stuff that they did. I walked through last year, and there were these wooden cutouts of all the South Park figures, so you could walk through as their twentieth year anniversary kind of thing. And I was Netflix Daredevil, so huh. I, like you could pose for all these pictures. So I posed in between the anime the anime style South Park boys and stuff, which was just. It's great when you're dressed up like Daryl. Um, but this year, there was a security stand set up. Everybody got through really quickly, and they were playing uh, season three episode one, the episode that came out on April Fool's Day, which was um, great, which was just a blast. Yeah. They did it on April Fool's Day, which was. And then we kept doing a loop, so I thought I missed it, and I didn't. I was um, like, "Oh, thank God!" <laughs> and I'm telling my friend about it. He doesn't know um, Rick and Morty. We show up. As that episode is ending, and, you know, he's laughing because I've told him about the Szechuan sauce and, you know, <laughs> the loose notes about it. Two minutes of previews, and there's these massive inflatable Rick and Morty, you know, balloons all over the place. The Morty had, like, a, a cut in his side, so I put my hand over it kind of thing, and the thing still stayed massive. And then they rolled right into episode two from the new season. It's a spoof on uh, Mad Max. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yes. and Witness me. And it's like Summer and and uh, Morty go with Rick to the Mad Max world, and Summer's really pissed off because at the end of the last season, her parents announced their divorce. Uh, so as Jerry is moving out of the house, they go do this, and she's just like, I've got some anger issues, and they just start blowing everything away, and it's, oh my god. All right. So it's good. fun. All right. So it was really cool. Stop interrupting. You've been talking for longer than I. Yeah. <laughs> To be able to get in, to not have to pay for anything, to see that the Rick Mobile was there, they had Pickle Rick t-shirts, I, I, it was, it was amazing. I, I'm so jealous, like, Rick and Morty is, and uh, we've talked about this before, Pain and Visions, I'm like, it's, it's my shit, I just love Rick and Morty, I think it's such a well-written show, so, I am so jealous there's, of you. There is something about so San jealous. Diego, it's very commercialized and all that, but when you can be there for the world premiere or something, oh, man, that's so and I know that when, in 2015, when they were doing the Suicide Squad, when someone filmed it, and the director's like, we wanted to share that with the Hall H guys because people will come and camp for two days here for that. I, I, I get that, but yeah. man, the part of being there for something brand new when it's being released is just 
That is cool. That is Guess cool. who met Brian Howard Newman? Really cool. Oh, gosh. And who's friends with him on Facebook, this. too, now, by the way. Oh. 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 You so I'm shout it out. I'll tag him on this. Could you be thing. a fan? Go tag him on this. All right, guys. Cool. So that's our trailer thon. There's so yes. many more we've mentioned before. You can see them all online. But YouTube is con basic. Consolidation. You're good to go. But this is, that's it for us. Yeah. All right. So my top three picks for the week. I am a child of the 80s, and when I saw that this had been coming out, I was getting really excited. Jim Henson, Power of the Dark Crystal, has been out for a little while now, but we're getting issue number five. A um, little bit of background on some of this. Uh, the Dark Crystal came out in 1982, and Labyrinth, which is sort of the style of tale that they're telling here, came out in 86. These are movies that recently... Um, have been coming back into popularity. People have been talking about them. They've had anniversaries as of recent. So I'm really happy that Jim Henson is doing some more stuff, especially with all the hoopla that's been going on with The Muppet Show and all of that. I like something positive. So Power of Dark Crystal takes place in a labyrinth style universe where it's um, the Skeksis ruled land of Thra. And it's really nicely written. Uh, William Spurrier art's done by Nicole Matthews. I mean, this is one of those things that is super kid friendly, obviously, it's Jim Henson. But it's teaching you that, you know, kindness is like a rippling effect on the water. You do one thing and it affects others and it affects others. So what you do in your life does matter and doing something small while it may seem small can affect the larger picture in ways that were totally beyond what you thought. So Jim Henson, Power of the Dark Crystals, five, go pick it up. My second pick is Van Helsing versus the Werewolf, number one. Um, again, if you're familiar with some of what has been going on in the past, most people know Van Helsing as this guy who goes and fights vampires. Uh, in this version, it's Liesl Van Helsing, so yes, it is a woman and she is taking over. She is hunting for the sword of heaven so that she can defeat the evil powers. Um, Chuck Dixon is a writer on this one and the art cover is uh, Drew Edward Johnson. Um, always like a strong female character. So this is one that I'm also looking forward to, you know, I like bringing you those number ones. And my third pick for the day is Conan the Slayer, number 11 by Colin Bunn, art by Sergio Fernandez Davila. Uh, Davila. Whoa, man, I swallow. That's a long name. Sergio Fernandez Davila. Um, basically, everything I'm bringing you <laughs> today seems to have either a movie or a TV show or something else behind it. A lot of the Conan movies from, again, back in the 80s, that's my era, that's my childhood, um, have influenced comics and vice versa. Comics have influenced movies. So this is a story that has been continuing. We have the island fortress of Zapur and Conan is now having to find this mystic dagger to defeat a demon with impenetrable skin, but he's got to get through this crazy serpent beast. Um, and again, if you're familiar with like Conan the Barbarian movies, you know, He's always fighting some epic monster or some uh, crazy villain. So Conan, number 11, definitely check it out. And those are my top three picks. All right, guys. So we do have to talk about the slight downside of yeah. San Diego Comic-Con. Since it's become such a um, monolith of a convention uh, with all of the different draws and attractions, you wind up having what has lovingly been dubbed as Line con. Line con. You have to get into a line to do anything. You want to get food? Go get in a line. You want to go to the bathroom? Go get in a line. You want to go see a panel? Go get in a line for two days. You want to go get Funko Pops? You better make sure you're getting up at five thirty to get in a line. Yeah. So I line don't know. cons are it's even even for like Awesome Con, for example. I legit was in line the whole con, and I was like, and that that kind of for me ruins the experience in some way because I really want to do certain things, but I I have to invest my time in that one thing. For an entire day, like people, like uh, if I go to San Diego Comic Con, I'm just gonna go to Hall H to see Marvel, and if I have to sit there for two days, I'm gonna, because that's the only reason I would go. And I guess that's the thing. I mean, people go to conventions for different reasons. I mean, Rob and I, especially, we go to conventions for totally different reasons. Not that I don't enjoy the authors and the writers and the artists, but like he loves going and talking with them and meeting them and really getting to know the personalities behind the stories that he reads. And I love going and hanging out with friends 
and dressing in silly costumes and being, you know, a giant kid all weekend. Yeah. Like, that's what I go for. But there are some people who go and all they want are, they want the swag. There are some people who go mm -hmm. and they really just want to go see these panels and they want to have an opportunity to see the people that they see on the big screen right there in front of them, albeit either really, really tiny from far away or, you know, slightly larger up on a separate screen in front of them. But, yeah. you know, that's what they go for. So, I mean, I'm not necessarily going to bash on somebody because that's why they choose to go to a convention and that's how they want to spend their time. It's but, just hard. And what yeah. sucks up, uh, for me is like, oh, uh, East Coast baby, that being over the West Coast, they, San Diego Comic Con seems to be the only convention that's not a Comic Con, but can somehow get every main actor of like, the fact that they can get all of the Marvel and all of the DC people to show up, and we yeah. can't even get like those kind of people over here in the East Coast. Right. It's, like, it's a little disheartening because you kind of want to, I like to go for the celebrities too. I have a celebrity wall. Like, I want to meet them. I'm all yeah. about pictures and meeting and we don't get this kind right. of caliber over here. I have friends who got to walk through the line and basically meet the entire cast of Black Panther that they had there and get to speak with them one-on-one. -on -one. And I don't know if we're going to get anything like that at New York. Yeah. Um, I mean, we definitely don't get the larger East Coast conventions being New York Comic Con and Dragon Con. Yeah. While they both are comic-related, they're also a lot of pop culture-related. And they just Which brings up the whole Comic Con thing. So, right. San Diego Comic Con, and we've had this random few episodes back on how they're trying to copyright Comic Con, but in essence, there really isn't a true Comic Con mm -hmm. out there that is that big. Like, San Diego Comic Con is not a Comic Con. New York Comic Con is not a Comic Con because when you invest more money on celebrities and less on the artists and the comics, mm -hmm. you're losing the essence. You're more of a nerd con. Which you're is what like, happened with Wizard World. Yeah, Wizard they, World's a mess. They used to be fantastic, and as soon as they started bringing in these big name celebrities, the quality of the convention itself went down because they stopped taking care of the guests as much. I mean, and granted, I'm not somebody who goes and is like, oh, I want my free swag. But at the same time, there are things that they used to do that people had grown to expect that suddenly they don't have the money for anymore because they have to pay their celebrities and the handlers and everybody else who's involved in keeping them safe. And I so, went to Wars of World Philly to meet Tom Hiddleston and, mm -hmm. and Chris Hemsworth and whatnot. I was in line from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And, see, that's and that was all I could do. And they mismanaged. They had to pull people out of lines to go to another lines. And it, it, But this is every Comic-Con. But right. they're not really Comic-Cons. And I no. think that's my frustration. And I think when they get to be a certain size, it becomes less about what the true intent of a convention was about in the beginning, which is the fans and bringing, the, you know, bringing these stories to life for the fans because if it weren't for the people who read the comics if it weren't for the people who went out there and watched the movies they really wouldn't have any of this as a business or an industry to begin with so you know you still have to think about what can we do for the people who are supporting us who are giving us their money who are traveling out because some people travel not just you know two towns over some people travel from states away some people come in for san diego comic-con and different countries different countries, from different countries. You have people yeah. who are spending massive amounts of money just to get here. So what is the draw? What's going to keep them coming back year after year? Because I can tell you, Wizard World has been slowly losing out. And I'm really afraid that with San Diego becoming the, the giant that it is, and a lot of these comic book dealers basically pulling back, mm -hmm. that we're going to be losing a lot of what originally made Comic-Con Comic Con. Because I think what we're going to have to do is start accepting the fact that we're losing Comic-Cons and we're gaining more marketing cons. Yeah. Because that's really what San Diego is. It's just a marketing con. It has nothing to do with the actual comics. We just happen to have comic book movies. Right. And the, the actors. And I, I, I feel bad for the artists. Like, sure. you know, I, I would love to be able to meet Jason Aaron one day. And I have the opportunity. And I don't I don't think he goes to a lot of conventions or whatnot that yes, I haven't been able to get to. Kansas City. I don't get a good here at home. You can come to Harris Con with us next year. Okay. So, guys, nice. tell us what do you think about these huge conventions and and how do you it think has it's changed running comic books, the comic base cons. of cons? Yeah. So I think that, give us your opinion. Yeah, I'd like to know. All right. Okay, everyone. So this is my top three picks. Number one, we're gonna go with The Punisher, number fourteen by um, Becky Cloonan. So if you've been reading this series, what's really nice about it is if you know nothing about The Punisher, that you can really just step into the world. The last volume really did a recap of the last 12 issues. So if you don't know much about Frank Castle, 
Um, like a lot of us who are watching The Punisher from old movies and now with the Netflix series, you kind of are like, ooh, let's learn more about Frank Castle. This is really a great way to start with this series. So this next volume, Frank Castle, somebody came and stole one of his weapons. He's doing the old school detective work instead of, um, Becky usually has a lot of nonstop action in her comics. Um, and this one is very story driven, which I, it's actually enjoyable. I like more story than action sometimes, especially with Frank Castle. So he's in New York, kind of like going around. He's been gone for the last 12 issues outside on vacation. So going back to his old roots is something that um, I think a lot of people who are also diehard Punisher fans are going to enjoy. All right, so number two pick, it is Spider-Gwen number 22 by Jason uh, Latour. So this is the Predators part four. So if you're keeping up with Spider-Gwen, we have, we have Spider Gwen fighting what I think is hilarious as um, Matt Murderdoc, but it's Matt Murdoch. He's an ah. evil <laughs> daredevil. I think it's great. Um, Gwen and Harry have kind of teamed up and trying to defeat him and his evil horde, and it's it's very humorous. I'm <laughs> really really enjoying it. Um, it's been a slow burn of the story. I'm a huge Spider Gwen. I'm kind of was just expecting there to be just a little bit more. Um, I think this is going to be a great end of the series of seeing how um, this, how they defeat, obviously we'll have to defeat Matt Murdock, but I think we need to see more evil Daredevil in future comics. All right, number three, Wonder Woman number 27 by Shay Fontana. If you have just been introduced to Wonder Woman through the comics, this is a great first stepping stone for Wonder Woman. Um, for, for this series. If you just watch the movie, you're kind of being like, oh, I want to even know more about Diana. This has a lot of feelings of the film. So you have her mother, Diana's mother, who's very worried about her. She's got a Diana's seem like, she's so naive about humanity and just wants to help everybody. And she's just kind of going into the world and she's been helping the UN. She's trying to find out what's going on. She's finding out in this volume that one of her friends are actually involved in the attack with her and her friends. So is this that mystery? But again, all three of these comics I recommend. So these are my top picks, guys. All right, so that is basically our wrap up for the week. Yeah. It is Comic-Con, Comic-Con, Comic-Con. All the trailers have dropped. Everything that Marvel and DC have been putting out. Our top picks for the week. Yeah, I mean, this episode could have easy have been like three hours with everything <laughs> oh that came out gosh. of um, San Diego Comic-Con. Check out like, of course, new release Wednesday. We've been posting a lot on the Facebook page of every update that we don't. There's so much more that we're not covering, guys. Yeah, but we can't give you good. all the content. So check out the Facebook page. We'll post things there that we're not necessarily going to talk about here. Just because, man, we would be here all day. And we would love to talk to you all day. I would like that, but I, I do I need to sleep eventually. Yeah, sleep, food. That's all good. Uh, next week, we're going to be coming to you from Painted Visions. Painted Visions. One of our favorite places in the world. Yes. And, um... Bringing you all the new top picks, all the good pop culture. Uh, we look forward on. to your comments, guys. So yeah. we like seeing some interaction with you guys on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram or whatnot. Just interact. Let us know if you got questions, if you got jokes. You you know you want to call out. Let us know. He's there again, isn't he? Yeah, I can smell him. One last plug. Um, our friends over at Comic Logic, Kevin Bednards. They have no con this weekend, no, but... which I totally forgot about. So I love Kevin. Gonna throw them nice some love guy. real quick. Shout out to uh, Nova Con. Check them out. And that's all, y'all. All right. All right. We'll Follow, see you guys like, next subscribe. week. Catch all you right. later.